Hideo Tube, let's go there. Hideo Tube, uh, after being a hiatus, I believe, for about seven years, we got a special edition of Hideo Tube, you know, talking about the recent announcements of uh, not just OD, not just, you know, making uh, Death Stranding the first one and talking about Death Stranding 2 and even talking about why he's making Fizzent. That's what I'm going with. OK. Mm-hmm. Or the next Metal Gear. OK, so. So let's talk about that a little bit. You know, we've seen, you know, some things uh, surrounding that. I do have some notes that I want to mention, you know, on record uh, that Hideo mentioned about why he's creating the next Metal Gear, you know, Fizzent, you know, a code word there, a keyword uh, for, for it right now and how he had to reconsider his priorities. So I want to hear your thoughts there and then I'll fill in some some things after. Yeah, I think Kojima, you know, after branching off from Konami, and being able to kind of do whatever he wants and and make the games and the passion and the media that he's wanted to do and film or, or create this team, you know, this incredible team that's made incredible games over the past several years and have been teasing all these projects that are on the way. You know, he's got the collaboration with uh, Peel, Jordan Peel. Um, he's got that uh, horror or not a horror it's a collaboration with a 24. Um, he's doing like a death stranding thing. And now he's got Fizzent and we've got death stranding two on the way. Um, it's all stuff to be really excited about. And I've been waiting a long time to get more of Hideo too, because he really is one of those once in a generation, um, it, not even just a console generation, but like a generation of humanity. He's one of those genius filmmakers. He's a Scorsese. He's a Tarantino. You know, he is that to the game industry. And he has been such a presence since even before he dropped Metal Gear Solid 1. But I think we really consider that game as a certain point in the industry where we were like, OK, games can be art. This is like watching a movie. This is this has voice acting. This makes me care about the characters. It has camera angles. And the more you play, you know, you see what you did in Metal Gear Solid five with the camera angles and the chasing cam and all that and doing the same with Death Stranding. I mean, it's like living a movie. And then he turned what people would say is a walking simulator, but it's more a simulation of actually walking. You're working on your balance, your stamina, you're carrying all this gear and trying not to tilt one way or the other. It really immerses you in hiking and path choosing, which we really get into the stuff about why game developers make ladders yellow and why the ledges we have to climb are covered in yellow paint and the barrels we have to destroy are red. Well, I mean, with Kojima, it's like everything was open. It was a canvas and you could climb anything you wanted to climb within reason. Otherwise, you had to get tools out. So I think it's exciting. And I think he has a very limited time on this earth and he's getting older and he's not that old. But I think he realizes exactly how long it takes for a Death Stranding type of project to be done and how much it takes for a new project. And that's why uh, he was talking with Guillermo del Toro, who told, he said, I want to get in the movie industry. I want to do this and that. And he said, no, stick with the games, stick with what you're good at. You can do more in with the tools that you have in a shorter time. You come over here and do a movie, you're going to lose six to 10 years of your life. So, I mean, they had a really honest conversation as two filmmakers together. And I think the fact that he gets that level of respect in the industry from actors and filmmakers and people that understand his his path in this world, that's incredible. It is absolutely incredible. And one of the things that really caught me with uh, this particular Hideo tube is that Mm -hmm. I I don't necessarily love subtitled things, but, you know, if I really want to know what's happening in that particular world or movie, then you have to watch it. Right. Especially if it's in another language. Uh, he's 60 last year, you know, 61 this year, about 10 years away from being 70. You know, that was a note that was mentioned. Uh, the the thing mm-hmm. that I want to before I give my thoughts on, on this um, Fizzent and X Metal Gear and all that stuff is um, f- uh, feedback from gamers. Right. When companies take the time to listen to the gamers, 
that are playing their games hours upon hours, the gamers that find the hidden walls, you know, the cracks, you know, in the games, you know, the glitches and all that stuff. When you uh, that understand storytelling, because we have storytellers and people who understand storytelling that are gamers, you know, that Mm -hmm. are moms, dads and, you know, who love games and who who understand, you know, writing and how to to write creatively and, and things like that. So when you create a world that has a lasting impact on gamers, Metal Gear, you know, one through five and everything that we've experienced. And you take that feedback and you say, yeah, I actually want to do something with it. It's only going to make you more money, right? It could have been the case for Anthem. Yeah. But, but Anthem did not listen. I'm not going to beat on it too much. You know, (laughs) I know you have a soft spot for, for the game. You know, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. Right. But the critical feedback that they had for Anthem and they didn't act on that, you know, that's what we got. Right. We, we got something that sunsetted that should have still been here. Right. Because it's it's obvious that these titles, all these looter shooters can coexist. It's obvious. Right. Because we have Warframe. We still have Borderlands. We still have Destiny. We still have Division. We still have uh, the Ashes one. Right. Remnant of mm-hmm. the Ashes. So all these games can coexist if you listen to the individuals that are spending time with it. So I wanted to point that out first. Okay, the next thing is I have a list of some fun facts of that we should know from that conversation about what's happening with the next Metal Gear game, if you call it that or Fizzent. Okay, so some notes here. Uh, he's creating Fizzent. We are aware of that. Wanted something new to do with his own IP. He made Death Stranding. Wanted to do a franchise. Did DS2, right? Working on that. Wanted to do something new, as you mentioned. Working on OD, right? And for the last eight years, so this, this is his words, for the last eight years, gamers have been asking, when is the next Metal Gear game coming? The last eight years. OK, so from right. there in 2020, he fell ill. You know, he had surgery during that time, as he mentioned, wrote a will because, hey, you never know when you're going to go. Right. So whatever you're working on, whether it's the next Metal Gear game or the next book, the next podcast, the next video, the next whatever, you, we don't know where we're going to go. OK, so, you know, you're you're going to do it next year or however many years. A lot of folks that said that during a this critical point that we just had in our humanity in the last couple of years, they can't write it anymore because they're no longer here. Right. Yeah. And just just be very sensitive about that, you know, because, you know, a lot of us lost folks during that time, including myself. Right. So so in that moment, he realized that one day he wasn't going to be here anymore. Uh, Sixty years. He decided that, hey, I'm never going to retire. I'm just going to keep doing what I love. And he decided to change his priorities because of gamer feedback to create a game that we've been asking for the last eight years. So if you can do that, if he can do that at 60, 61 Mm -hmm. this year, right? Nine more years, till 70. If you could do that at that age and you are one of the greatest individuals that ever done it when it comes to, you know, world creation and 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 understanding movies and even during the hideo tube when i was watching it they had a list of all the different people that they can get that he could pretty much get anybody at this point yeah you know you know what i mean like whether it's in uh, the movie side or the gaming side anyone would want to work with hideo kojima because of his catalog and his his creativity and his 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 genius right so i think that gamers and critical feedback is essential for all the games that we're playing. What is that going to look like for uh, the next generation of games that we're going to see? You mentioned Gears earlier t- uh, today. If we see a next Gears, is it going to be the the horror thriller of the first game or is it going to be something else? Because they had to go back to that, right? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. three became more of an arcade game. Uh, four mm-hmm. was, you know, so-so. Five actually returned to that, you know, somewhat of a horror feel that we appreciated from the first game. And it seems like, as we shared earlier, every company is going back to basics. If you look at Call of Duty now, what you're playing is a game that we played years ago, reimagined with the technologies that we currently have. It's the mm-hmm. same core formula, right? And when they started doing the vertical stuff and all the other stuff that they were doing, we we're like, just go back to the formula that made you great. And look what's happening with every game, Resident Evil series. Gear series, Call of Duty series, or any any shooter, beat 'em up series, Turtles, 
uh, Streets of Rage. We can go down the list. Every company is going back to basics. If that, if you don't like that, mm. then I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to be nice today. I'm trying to be fair. I'm trying to be fair. If you don't like that, you don't like it. You don't like it. I don't it, know right? what to tell you. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. But any final words on that? I, I think, I think it's, it's really brilliant to actually see that. Uh, and having things in place with a cooperation uh, with, you know, PlayStation, all the things that he's going to do in the future. We got OD, we got Death Stranding, we got the next Metal Gear, like a lot of excitement in the industry just on one creator and developer. Right. Imagine yeah. what's going to come, you know, this Thursday and, and all the stuff that we're going to announce. Um, we're we're going to hear announced, you know, towards the end of the year. But go ahead. You got it. Yeah, I mean, I think him coming to terms with his mortality and also listening to the fan base, you know, he came out with Death Stranding, which was a, a real left curve uh, from what people expected. I think people saw that and they thought, oh, man, this is his next Metal Gear. This is the answer. And then it just ended up being something completely different. You know, he just really wanted to go a different way and create something that's never been created before. It was a game about community and about building, rebuilding the world together. You know, that's way different from uh, stealth action espionage, but yeah, the fact that he's heard the cries of the people that they want more metal gear and he's actually eating to that. That's a, that's a blow to the ego, right? Because you wanted to go somewhere new and, and do all these amazing things and establish your career and, and just keep going. Um, but the fact he has to go back to what he does best and he knows it, um, that's that's an incredible change. I, I guess my speculation here is that Konami owns the rights to Metal Gear. So is he going to try to wrestle those back? And that's why it's called Fizzent right now. That's why we don't have an official title. Is it that there might be negotiations in works where it's like, hey, you know, you want this. I want this. This is the biggest money operation either of us have ever had like this is an opportunity to make billions if we can bring metal gear back in a big way and not mess it up you know so it could be that if it's not that then it's just something that's really like metal gear with the dna and just new characters new world you know and he can pull in all the greatest actors and directors and musicians and and camera operators and everything everybody will join in to make this ultimate metal gear i don't think we've ever seen that on a video game before we have seen big games like the last of us and and we've seen what he's done with previous games with some of the best voice actors in the business and the capture that they go through to bring those experiences to life I don't think we've ever seen anything like what's about to happen. I don't think people understand the scale of that. It's going to be huge. 